good. All that's left to do is to fill out some of these functions. The big one is the run operations. This was the meat of the loop where we have a specific pool in the index offset of the try pool. What's the pseudocode here? First up, we need to take a chain snapshot that saves the state of the current chain. Then we're gonna run a bunch of chain altering operations. We're gonna ape into a pool. That's gonna be largely review of stuff we've done before. It'll take some time. We'll then skip forward one day, check our curve balance and revert. Seems easy enough. The chain snapshot is the first in this. That simply is a save point. We are allowed exactly one. So if we make another snapshot, it will overwrite it. So we wanna make sure that we don't overwrite that and make sure we only have one usage of the snapshot. Let's then pass the parameters we received, pool, pool index, and the try pool LP onto an ape function. That again is gonna be largely review. We'll deal with it in a second. The more chain properties, skipping forward one day. We have two options. We could sleep or we can mine. Sleeping doesn't mine a block. Mine will create a new block at this offset. This is one day offset, a time delta of 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours in a day. Then we'll run that same function that we called initially to calc our current value that is going to be responsible for actually claiming tokens. We need to get the pool name, which we will pass back to the return. We promised a name with the value. There we avail ourselves again of the registry. And finally, to revert, this will return, store the save point. So several blockchain operating op, uh, affecting operations in aping, mining, and getting the pool. But when we're done, we'll have a clean slate so we can work with this with other pools in our loop. Return the name and value and our operations are secure. All right, not much more to do. We have to ape still. As I mentioned, I will walk through this quickly because this is a bit of a review of everything we've done so far. The basic steps is we need to approve a deposit from try pool into a meta pool. There are faster ways of doing it using zappers. We're just going with this. Well, then you add liquidity. Some of these pools don't have a gauge. So we'll run a check. If we get this far, then we'll create approval for the rewards pool and we'll make a deposit. These are the steps necessary to get into a curve pool and earn rewards. So first up, we need our balance for our approval. which will be signed and sent from the whale address. To add liquidity, we're gonna create an empty array based on the number of coins in the pool. The pool index offset for tripool will be set to the current tripool balance. And then we call add liquidity on amounts, again, from the whale address to check if the pool actually has a gauge. We'll call the get gauges function and load that into the gauge address. It's a tuple of tuples, so we need the zero, zero offset. Again, we will check for the zero address. And if so, we just return. Next up to create approval for the rewards pool. We'll 
we'll get the ERC20 token, load that into pool LP, and use this to calculate the balance of our whale. And here we'll just run a check. My slate is clean. I'm using a blank account, but if you already have allowances, this will just check to see that you don't already have sufficient allowance. And if so, if we need to fire this, then we run the approval on the LP token. So far, so good. To make our deposit, we'll load up the gauge address into a contract with the approvals already set. We simply deposit the pool balance from the whale. One final function, this is called at the initial, and it's called every loop of our pool to calculate our current value. As mentioned, this is gonna affect the blockchain. We're first gonna just get the initial value. If for your case, you may already have curve. Then we're going to set curve claim array. Mint mini is the function that we call on the minter calculate our balance, and we'll undo the mint mini. Now bear in mind, this is in some cases being nested within our chain snapshot. So we can't call chain snapshot for this. We initially have to calculate our balance. I'm gonna create a new helper function because we're gonna use this a couple of times. Don't worry, this one's simple. All we're going to do is we're going to calculate the current balance of the whale and divide this into decimals so it's a bit more human readable. My account will have zero, but you may already have some curve balance. And we're going to create a blank array, this time blank in terms of addresses. The Mint Mini can take up to eight. And what we're going to do is we're going to do another one of these massive monster loops. Again, this is horribly optimized, but just for instructional purposes. Where you loop through every curve pool. And we're going to check if a gauge exists. And then add gauge to claim if balance. Some of these pools are not blessed with rewards gauges. In the event that they are, then we want to run the check. But if it was returning the zero address, then we just continue, aka we go to the next stage of the loop. For here, then there is a gauge, so we can feel safe loading the contract. And then we're going to check if the balance of the whale exists. And if J, our ticker, is under the eight minimum, then we will add this to our claim array. If you happen to have a position in more than eight pools, this function will only take the first eight. So you would need to modify this to generate a few different mint mini claims. Then with our array created, we can simply mint mini. And we'll calculate our final balance. And to undo Mint Mini, we'll note there's only one blockchain altering operation here. So if we undo, that will rewind that single operation. And we don't need to deal with or worry about the state change for our uh, chain snapshot. Finally, we subtract the final balance from the initial balance and we're set. We're only calculating curve. You would change this function a bit if you wanted to deal with additional rewards. But we're curve maxis, so we don't care about any tokens but curve. Finally, let's run it. I'm 
interested to see what typos we have. I'll run interactive mode in case I made some big mistakes. Over here, I'll get ready to deal with any potential typos. But so far, it's actually maybe going to work. As I mentioned, this is done in the absolute slowest possible way. So it's going to take some time. In addition to chains, as a video editor, I'm capable of fast forwarding this. So I'm not going to sit here and make you wait. <laughs> And let's try again. And that's a wrap. If nothing changes in between today and tomorrow, the best and the worst pools, the best would be LUSD, the worst would be link USD or doing nothing. Of course, lots can change, so your mileage may vary. Nonetheless, this is how you can use the chain property to run several operations and redo them. Drop your questions in the comments. I'm going to finish my brownie.